such a big sound for such a small radio. You may recognize the concept from the Bose Wave Radio, which was released in 1993. Henry Close, a well-renowned audio engineer based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, the founder of Cambridge Soundworks, Tivoli Audio, and KLH, um, decided to design a, a stereo that would blow the original wave radio out of the water, and uh, for less money, a lot less money. Henry Close designed the Model 88, which was released in 2000, or 99, not sure which, it was the subject of a few lawsuits, or a few patent infringement lawsuits, uh, from um, Bose, and uh, I'm not entirely sure what the outcome was. I haven't looked into it that much. Um, but what I do know is I was actually involved in selling the Model 88's uh, refurbished units at a small computer recycler um, our company would purchase pallet loads of equipment um, from liquidators and we would resell it. We'd fix everything we'd sell and, you know, offer it to the customer for a fairly decent price. Well, one time we got a pallet load or a few pallets of uh, broken Model 88 stereos. They were brand new units. Um, they were customer returns. We got them for pennies on the dollar and they all had the same defect. I remember my boss actually was the one fixing them and I believe it was a it was a faulty connector on the main board. And later in this video we're actually going to take this unit apart and we're going to fix the broken CD door. It's not broken anymore. <laughs> so anyway, you're going to see actually how it's put together. So these units um they work by producing audio or sound through three speakers. There's two full range speakers in the front and there's a subwoofer in the middle. And it's the bass produced by the subwoofer that gives the unit its rich sound and it's actually piped through tuned channels that output the bass from this bass port right here. So the entire unit is like a giant ear, inner ear. Um, the, the way it's designed and this is a very simple design in comparison to the wave radio, which I believe has a much more complex uh, waveguide assembly. But this one's fairly simple. It uses the cabinet. Um, actually, I just described it to you because I just, I just had it apart recently. And the, the driver is right in the middle, and the sound is projected towards the front, where it's bounced off the back of the cabinet, and then out the front here. And on this side, um, I believe it actually, uh, no, I think it just goes on, it, it actually works uh, on, on this side alone. Um, but you're going to see that later on when we fix the door. Um, I don't have a remote for this unit, but I did find the manual online. There it is. The unit was manufactured in 2001, according to the, uh, the dates I found on the inside of the cabinet. A little older than I thought it was. But the original remote was a credit card style remote, just like the Bose Wave Radio. So he, he pretty much ripped off Bose, but skirted the law just so that he could avoid patent infringements directly. He was a brilliant man. He knew what he was doing. And um, he actually, a couple other little uh, factoids that I found while browsing the web. The Model 88. Now the 88 was an homage to the Model 8 which was one of uh, Henry Close's original products back in the 60s or 70s. And 88 is also the number of keys on a stage piano. Um, so there was an homage to that as well. Um, there was also, an, an, one of his design, um, I guess you want to call it, uh, one of his requirements in the design was that he didn't want people using this as an alarm clock. He wanted this to be more of a professional piece of audio equipment. That's how he designed it. He wanted it to be looked upon as a real, serious piece of audio equipment. So the original Model 88, the non-CD version, um, did not feature a built-in alarm clock. This one actually has a full-featured alarm clock, uh, making it the world's largest alarm clock, and the loudest. Um, but... 
He made an accessory module that could be purchased with the unit that would actually use infrared. It, basically, the, the accessory unit was the control panel itself that could be placed anywhere within a line of sight to the unit. And it could be programmed like a... Like a um, well, think of it as a, as a remote control on steroids. So you could actually program the unit from the remote uh, to go off at a certain time. The alarm function was basically built right into the external unit. And it would send a signal to the, uh, to the radio to power up, play a CD, or play the FM radio. This radio also features a built-in, um, well, optional, backup battery. Not built-in, it's replaceable. There's a 9-volt battery compartment in the very back, and um, that allows the alarm to still function when the power is disconnected. But it also preserves the time and the um, programmed channels at the same time. Pretty cool. Uh, so if I unplug it, I don't lose any of my presets. The owner's manual is pretty self-explanatory. Um, initially, I had a problem. It was stuck in military time. And I'll show you how to change that. So I'm going to turn the unit off. And we're going to hold down the set key. Position the camera so you can see it. Here we go. That's better. That's even better. -er. All right, so I'm going to hold down the set key, and I'm going to press earlier and later at the same time. Press and hold. Let's try that again. There we go, 24-hour mode. Let's put it right back. Try it again. <laughs> Takes a minute. No, it's still not wrecking my mind. There we go. Um, okay, so time up or down and up, earlier and later. The time is actually uh, six six oh two. PM. Okay, we're going to turn it back on again. Just queuing up the CD. Oop, volume's here. It has a few um, settings for the uh, stereo functionality. We can change it. Right now it's in wide, which is like a simulated surround sound. This is mono, it does support mono on CD and AM FM, and simple stereo. The uh, bass is controlled through a knob on the back. There are no other audio controls or equalizers or anything fancy like that. Um, Henry Close was a very simple engineer. Um, he, only he only included the features that absolutely needed to be there. I mean, he was. Think of it like Steve Jobs, um, you know, where he would strip down his machines to the bare essentials, and that's it. Uh, so that made um, that made him a very, uh, a very unusual engineer, I guess, in some senses. Actually, Steve Wozniak was the same way. There are no extra components or frivolous accessories or anything built into this unit. That's really my point. Um, you can adjust the audio by controlling the bass. That's it. <laughs> While I had the unit apart, I discovered that the CD player mechanism is one of the uh, Philips commercially available CD assemblies, or CD player assemblies. Um, these units can be purchased off the shelf, actually, and um, installed in just about anything. It's a fairly universal CD player mechanism, and I, I don't know if they're still in production, but they were for a while. Um, you'll notice that the door doesn't spring open because the spring is missing. Um, both hinges were, were busted. One of them was shattered into two pieces, and I was able to repair it, which you'll see later in this video. One of the nice things about this radio is the AM-FM tuner, or sorry, the FM tuner, actually, 
uh, features a, um, a coaxial antenna connector, which you typically only see on higher end uh, radios and tuners. Um, but it does come with this uh, simple wire antenna, which is kind of pointless. The AM antenna, of course, is built right into the back of the unit right there. To set a uh, preset channel, just do 101.5 for the hell of it. Press and hold, so select the channel, tune it in, and you'll hold down the, uh, the letter you wish to assign it to, and you'll hear a slight clicking sound. Hear that? It's a pretty cool sound. I like it. This info key will show you a couple. Let's see what it does here. So we've got time, seconds played, and time remaining on entire disk. So we have 51 minutes of play time. Pretty cool. We have our usual random and repeat. And, uh,. I wonder if it supports programming tracks. Let's try. On the back, we have our subwoofer control, which I just explained earlier. Um, auxiliary input right and left, and um, record out, which is a uh, an eighth inch audio jack. The FM antenna. It also has a display off feature. Looks like. Um, snooze button actually becomes the mute button and uh, display off you press the info and repeat buttons at the same time so the display will shut off no? maybe not oh when the unit is off okay let's turn it off there we go. Display off. Display on. After 10 seconds, it's supposed to shut off. There it goes. If I hit the snooze button, it comes back to life. Okay, cool. Doesn't look like it supports... Um, programming CD tracks, which is a feature that uh, most CD players have or had up to a certain, uh, I don't think anybody ever really uses that feature, but um, not many people do, but um, it doesn't have that. See, I told you, like I said before, um, you know, Henry Close's engineering was pretty, pretty straightforward and simple. Um, if I press any preset button, the radio comes on, gradually, hear that? It didn't go right up to high volume, it just kind of slowly ramped up. Reception sucks in my house. I'm going to have to get a nice external antenna to make this work out, okay. I mean like a real one. When I was in New but it does sound amazing. Alright, now that we've seen the unit in action, we've shown the functions and what it can do, um, it's time to fix this uh, CD door, which is already fixed, so we're actually going to go back in time to where I actually did the repair. Stay tuned. Original MSRP of this unit was a... You know, I don't know. <laughs> I know that the... Uh, I know that the the, the AM/FM radio version was around 150 bucks, so I'm going to say this was about 200 dollars when it was new, and uh, worth every penny, mind you. The um, the Bose Wave radio AM/FM unit was only um, only <laughs> it was around 300 bucks. Um, in fact, today I think the equivalent is about God, it's a lot of money. 
Um, the other thing is, you know, Cambridge Soundworks is pretty much dead now. Um, they're they're just a division of Creative Labs, and they're basically just selling fancy iPhone and iPod iPad docks, um, Bluetooth speakers. It seems like the boutique audio industry is pretty much it's not gone, but it's not what it used to be. Um, there was a very wide select a wide variety of consumer grade um, boutique audio equipment that. Uh, you know, just existed to produce high-end sound, and uh, and nowadays it's pretty much devolved into iPhone accessories, which is kind of sad. Um, you know, but that's just that's progress, I guess. Um, I could hook this up to my iPhone uh, through an auxiliary uh, cable, uh, but I'll never get the Bluetooth um, connectivity or uh, you know iTunes controls through the control panel, and that's never going to happen. Um, but it wouldn't take much, you know, to get a nice little iPhone dock, just a dock with a uh, with an audio connector on the back, hook it up to this, and I can use my uh, my iOS devices with it, and uh, it'll produce amazing sound for years to come. On with the repair. This was a trash pick unit that a good friend of mine had uh, in his house, and I, wa I went over there to help him with his uh, computer, which he naturally killed, and um, fixed the problem, whatever. And uh, he had this sitting in a pile of junk. I'm like, hey, what are you doing with that old Model 88? He didn't really know what it was, and I explained to him, like, this is a pretty kick-ass compact stereo system. He told me I could have it. So I loaded it in the trunk of my Honda Helix, and I brought it home. And here it is. I cleaned it up a little bit. It has one defect, and that is the CD door it is held in by nothing. Uh, inside there somewhere is the rest of this hinge and the rest of this piece here. You can see a little tab must have broken off. And we're going to fix it. Um, the CD player does work. Um, it works quite well. I just tried it out, and uh, I don't need to, to show you because I don't want to have any copyright flags on my channel. So let's um, let's dig into it. We got to tear it apart and see whether the parts are in there to fix it. I've got this excellent glue that I've used on many different projects so far. This is Loctite Ultra Gel. This stuff kicks ass. Um, so I'm hoping that that's going to do the, chip, do, the uh, do the trick. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think I think I can get to it from the back. So let's try that first. So I'm just going to take the screws out. Take the uh, antenna. It's got a coaxial antenna. I mean, this is a quality piece of equipment. Um, you get a coaxial antenna, audio in, left and right. Mixing input, record out. I don't know what that's for. Base level is adjusted here. Um, and just like the Bose Wave radio, we're going to find that there's three speakers in here. There's going to be um, one subwoofer and two full range. Those are the speakers that you see on the side. And maybe we'll even find a production date. Wouldn't that be something? Henry Close, I believe, passed away in 2006. So he definitely was involved in, in the design. It's unfortunate, though, that Cambridge Soundworks was sold to Creative Labs and just sells fancy iPhone docks. Um, in fact, if you look at their site now, it's kind of depressing. Um, you know, it's like nobody cares about audio quality anymore. It's all about how well it works on the new iPad or iPhone. <laughs> kind of sad. But back in the day, it was all about the audio quality and the build quality. Not anymore. Things have taken a turn for the, for the worse. Wow. Talk about interesting construction here. Um, hmm. well, well, I think we have all of our hinge sections that we need to worry about. It's all there. Gonna, I don't want to 
to stress out any of these cables though. You'll see what I mean in just a sec here, I promise. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. There's our amplifier board. I gotta do something about that. I don't want to start disconnecting the world. This should be just a simple project. But I don't want to rip that cable. Alright. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that utensil. There we go. Use the utensil bin. Put that right there. Alright. Behind this is probably our subwoofer. Uh, driver, which, um, let me get a flashlight. This is interesting. It's a very simple design, from what I can tell. This is actually sealed. I can see there's some sealer on there. I don't want to take that cover off if I don't have to. And I don't have to. But from the looks of it, the audio, oh, this is genius. The base is projected towards that white plastic diffuser there. Yeah, that's what it is. And then it's projected straight back to here into this big chamber, where it's then sent out these base ports. There's one there. Oh, there's only one. Okay, so only one base port that I can see. I don't see one on the other side. And the full range drivers are behind that cover there. So that's... This was manufactured in... Let's see, that, uh, it's a 10 position clock. 8, 9, 10 position clock. 11, 12. Oh, it's a 12. So it was made in July of 2000. Okay, it's a little older than I thought. Not bad, though. Huh? Alright, so here's our hinges. Um, looks like they're salvageable. And we just have to reattach them. This could be fun. It could be fun. All right, let's give it a sh Let me show you why I love this glue. Now, most um, super glue comes out as like a water, and you can't really control where it goes. This one, you have precise control over how much you put out and where it goes. I'm just spread that around there. I don't usually advocate for gluing things like this, but it's a free radio. So, if this doesn't work, well, screw it. <laughs> Am I right? All right, let's try it. Let's see if this works. What we have here is a compound fracture. Look at that. Uh, this hinge is broken in one, two, three places. Uh, so, we have to reassemble those pieces and hope for the best. All we have to do now is uh, let it sit for like half an hour. I want this glue to fully cure before I try to reassemble it um, for obvious reasons. I spent about half an hour, give or take an hour. Um, we're going to try to reassemble this without breaking it. Uh, here we go. I have goosebumps. No, really, I do. I used to read the books a lot when I was a kid, and I have a lot of them. Okay, uh, looks like it goes on like this. I did, by the way, remove the witchamajigger. Oh, there we go. It slides in like so. Now, here's the, here's the hard part. See, we have to split two hinges apart without breaking them. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, without breaking them again. That's going to be the hard part. But if it works, yeah, baby. Um, oh, the whole CD player comes out. Look at that. Okay. Um, well, I don't need to pull it out. I just need to... Get the hinge back together. I wonder if, if this doesn't work, I wonder if I can buy a door. Yeah. Alright, we're there. One side, and now the other side. My god. I'm really stressing this out.
Okay, it's reattached. But, there's a problem. That. Um, <laughs> it looks like there's a... Uh, let's just pull the damn unit out. I just had it. Oh, 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 there's a cable at the bottom here. Don't forget that. That cable links to the um, here. You know, that's, 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 uh, rather unfortunate that it doesn't stay open. Um, I'm gonna have to, might as well put a battery in it, you know, when in Rome. There we go. Yeah, let's plug her in and see what happens. Da -da. Wait. Da -da. Uh, nothing. Really? Nothing. Da da. Okay, I uh, I mistakenly left the power cord unplugged. I know how crazy that sounds, but there's a major cord that goes from the transformer to the board. And that is what I left unplugged. So, um, all right. Let's check out that new door. Well, I figured out the problem. There's a spring missing. Uh, the spring is what keeps the door open. It must have popped off when the door initially broke off. But the door is now hinged, so, hey, you know. It's not really such a big deal, to be honest. I mean, I mean it does... Does the job, right? So, let's turn it on. CD comes up automatically. Alright. Oh, wait. Good. I think we're good to go. This sucker works. And uh, the door's fixed. Now, the very fact that um, these very thin plastic uh, hinges didn't break when I had to flex them outward so far um, really goes to show how awesome that glue is. Um, I'm not getting paid by the Loctite Corporation, but I'm telling you right now. Uh, where did I put the bottle? Um, the Ultra Gel is, like, kick-ass. I've used this on a few other projects, and I was just impressed by its uh, precision in application. But look at how well that worked. Um, if I had a spring, it would be 100% fixed, but I, I don't have a spring, and I don't know where I'm going to get one. 